Hey, Sippers. I'm Renee. I'm Martia. And I'm Demetrius. And we are Sip and Unwind, a true crime podcast. Hey, ladies. Hey, Sippers. Hey, ladies. Hey, Sippers. How are you? Hey. Hey, Hey, ladies. We back. Oh, I keep wanting to sing that song. Yeah, let's sing it. We back. (laughs) Every time. We We back. back. (laughs) True Crime Tuesday. It sure is. So, yeah. So, let's go get right up into this. So, what we're going to start off with is what, ladies? The drink. Okay. Okay, y'all got it. it. Y'all got it. Mm -hmm. So, what we're going to start off is what the liquor, what we always talk about first. So, today's (laughs) featured drink for tonight is simple. Okay. So, it's vodka, but with a twist. Okay, so I like the flavored vodkas. I'm not sure if you ladies are into any of the flavored. Yeah, um, you put me on. You know, we're the vodka you. queens over here. We can start getting some endorsement. Yeah. So, you know, my go to is vodka usually queen. the pineapple Ciroc, but Ooh. this time, um, I'll, you know, I saw a new one. It's a new one that's in. On, in stores right now, and it's white grape. So, you know, like that white Ooh, grape juice and all that stuff, good. but it's white grape vodka. And it's Ciroc too? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's a rock. So, um, yeah, and I will, you know, of course, how we always do, we're going to put a picture right. online on our Instagram right. page so that you can see the bottle itself. But usually, you know, I like to drink it on the rocks. But since I'm hosting this episode today, I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to be able to get through it. But, you know, because I have pineapple juice and cranberry juice with mine. Ladies, are you guys drinking this or you guys have something else? You what know, you I, I had to substitute. I still got vodka, but I didn't do that flavor. I couldn't mm-hmm. find it on my side of town. That's why I was like, wait a minute. Let me go over that again because I'm going to have to keep looking for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think it might be a special, special thing. So, yeah, I'll send it to you guys to see um, Sipper so you guys can see it. But, yeah, you can mix it with soda or juices and stuff like that. I'm not sure. Demetrius, do you drink vodka? You like vodka, right? Or I mean, I know you drink vodka, but do you like it? Like it? Is that your? I'm obsessed with vodka. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm just wondering. I love it. Because <laughs> you never talk about vodka like, I mean, like, I always talk about vodka. Well, the last drink that we had, it was a vodka added mm-hmm. to the cranberry mocktail. Yeah. Turn it to a, um, Girl, I don't do mocktails. <laughs> that was for our non sippers though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we look out for you guys. So, yeah, we so I do, have a, look, I do have a mocktail. I do have a mocktail for this. It's called just get some juice or some water. <laughs> <laughs> and then oh, put some ice in it, you. and then you'll have it too. So there oh, you go. gotta love Renee. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, so just head over to our Instagram page or Facebook. Um, we're gonna have a picture of it there. And if you guys are drinking it, or if you found it on your side of town or wherever you are, we're listening to us. Um, tag us and let us know. Take a picture of it because it's a it's a different looking bottle as well. So I think it's maybe just like a you know only for time being how they try to do those things and make put a little buzz behind it. But yeah, it's called White Grape Ciroc Vodka. All right, so now it's time to get into this true crime of the week. So, I'm ready, I'm ready. All right, I'm then. Ready. Okay, so this is a doozy, but this is a doozy that's a familiar doozy, I would think, to most of our sippers. So I'm going to go back to the year 1984 in Los Angeles County, California. Okay, so do you ladies and sippers out there, do you guys remember the Night Stalker? Remember that? I case? remember hearing about the night stalker, mm-hmm. but I don't remember the details. So mm-hmm. no. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so you yeah. Have to so refresh my memory on that one. Oh really? Okay. So yeah, but I'm telling my age a little bit, but um, since it happened in 1984, but I actually actually used to live in California and LA in that time when the night stalker was out there, you know, doing his thing. But of course, you know, I was really young, so I vaguely remember people, you know, talking about it and seeing stories on the news about it. Yeah. So I just want to dig into that case a little bit more. But on this episode, I don't want to focus like on the crimes itself and like recite the murders, the dates and the details of each of the unfortunate people that he killed. I want to focus on his time after his arrest. So this is going to be a little bit different. But before I get into that, I'll give you guys a little overview of or background of, you know, the Night Stalker and kind of what he did. So the Night Stalker, his name was Richard Ramirez, and he was dubbed the Valley Intruder as his attacks were first clustered in the San Gabriel Valley. And then he was also called the Walk-In Killer. And most infamously, he was known as the Night Stalker. So the Night Stalker is the only thing, you know, that I remember hearing of him being called the Night Stalker. I've never heard the Valley Intruder or even the Walk-In Killer. I haven't either. Yeah. So I just heard him as, you know, the Night Stalker. So he was a serial killer, a serial rapist, a kidnapper, 
a child molester, a burglar, and whose crime, his crime spree took place in California between June of 1984 until August of 1985. Ramirez's highly publicized home invasion and murder spree terrorized the residents of greater Los Angeles area and later in San Francisco Bay area over the course of 14 months. On August 31st, 1985, he was essentially captured by the citizens and not by the police. So I'll tell you how that happened. So as you can imagine, you know, his face was all over the news because he was a night stalker. Everybody was scared of him. And I remember, you know, like it was citizens, though. That's shocking. mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, you know, he was all over the news. Everybody was scared because it was a night stalker and he would come in at night and kill people, you know, and rape them or do whatever. But it was during, you know, the nighttime in California. So the entire state was fearful of the night stalker. So there was a group of elderly women and you know how these old women get, you know, they be knowing. So they was looking and they saw him, they identified him and he quickly fled the scene because he knew that he was, he was identified. Like when the people, I guess they might've said something to him or something, but he knew. So he ran and then he attempted to steal a car, but the owner saw him and pulled him out. And then he kept running. Then the next attempt, he tried to carjack a lady. But her husband saw the commotion and hit the night stalker over the head with a fence post. I'm sorry. And, can I interrupt for just a quick Oh, second? go ahead. I always find it mighty bold when people try to save their stuff. You know, like, oh, man, you want to hop in my car? Go ahead and take mm-hmm. it, drive away. And I'll just, you know, call and report it. Right. <laughs> it's stolen. It's so oh, weird. No, I think that's like an instinct. <laughs> Wait, this mine. Probably you know so. what you're doing. Right. Yeah. But I mean, not to say like, you can have it. We've seen footage of people hanging on the hood of their cars when somebody right. trying to steal it. I just, yeah. And anyway. I'm just like, child, are you serious? Like, you can get I'm, another I'm, one. It's okay. Right. I'm glad and even that if you can't, tell you about can't get it. another life. Exactly. Yeah, that's why I said I'm glad that person lived to tell about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. Oh, no, you're fine. Keep it up. Um. So, yeah. So, you know, he hit him over the fence, over the head with a fence post, and then he ran off. And then quickly, a, it was a group of about 10 residents formed after they saw, you know, what was going on in the commotion. And then they, they all chased Ramirez down the street. And then they eventually caught him. And then after they caught him, they beat him. And then they beat him until the police came. Oh, wow. And so when the police came, he was severely beaten. And then they took him into custody. And I'm not sure if you guys, um, ladies, if you remember, maybe the Sippers, if you guys remember, it was a picture. And I'll post it on Instagram where they have him in the back of a police car. You know, when he's handcuffed and whatever, he was arrested. He was back in the back of the police car. And he had his head taped up or not taped, but it was, what do you call that? Um, like gauze. It was like going around his head and under his chin. Oh, so because, they had a nerve to bandage because they because they beat him so much. Wow. They beat don't, him so bad. Don't bandage nothing. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm not even mad at that at all. But yeah, so he he got his little um, butt whooped, and then they took him into um, custody. So the trial started in 1988. And this was two years later, and was, on September 20th, 1989, Ramirez was convicted of all charges. So his charges were. 13 counts of murder, five attempted murder, 11 sexual assaults, and 14 burglaries. So during the penalty phase oh. trial of the right, I mean, like he did, a, he did a lot during this time. So during the penalty phase of the trial on November 7th, 1989, he was sentenced to death in California's gas chamber. He stated to reporters after his death sentence was handed to him, he says, quote, Big deal. Death always came with the territory. See you in Disneyland. How sick is that? What? No, right. that's beyond. Wow. wow. Right. I don't no, you know what? Um I'm, I'm not shocked. Right. Yeah. You know, all yeah. that horrendous, you know, mm-hmm. that's horrible. Yeah. See you at Disneyland. Uh, okay. Yeah. So after you killed all these people and terrorized the state for right. over a year. Right. So So, yeah, so I really want to talk about his time after he was arrested. Not sure if you ladies remember hearing about this or Sippers, if you guys remember hearing about this or know a little bit more about this. But he had a bit of a fan club of ladies immediately after he was arrested. And it continued after the conviction, even after he was convicted of all these all these crimes. You know, like everything was brought to trial and it was publicized on everything that he did. They still, you know, were after him. There were still women after him. You know, once they showed him. I guess once they showed, you know, his picture online or I'm not online, I guess this was 80s. But when they showed his picture like on TV 
or, you know, when he was arrested or while he was in court, I guess the ladies just liked what they saw. I'm not sure how that works, but they were attracted to him. I want to talk about these people who worship killers. Like, you know, that's like, like, like kind of a, like a phenomenon, how these killers get these ladies and it's usually women. I don't see it a lot the other way around. You have this lady who killed like 10 yeah. people or whatever. You don't have like a man. So he had a, a whole men. fan club. <laughs> yeah. Like he had a whole, a whole fan, fan club. And it's, it's like, it's common though, which is weird. It's common that a lot of these murderers get this. So during his trial, he gained a sort of a cult following of women who showed up at, you know, at the court during his trial and drooled over him. The women jockeyed for position in the courtroom to get one of his flirty glances while he was sitting in the defendant's chair. So the Los Angeles Times reported that Ramirez's fan club um, included women wearing skin tight black spandex jumpsuits and stuff and who smiled and waved at the killer. And then he smiled and waved right back at them in the courtroom. It's just I mean, I guess that does something for you. So going back to the even the days of um, Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy, remember he had all these fan mail. Now that I remember, do remember. yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's so sick. right, so he, you know, he received his fan mail, including naked photos, marriage proposals from women all over the world. So make uh, there was multiple women even showed up to the courthouse during Bundy's trial in the same manner that the groupies showed up for concerts. You know, it was like several of them. This was even the sick part that I didn't know about, but several of the ladies even dressed up like the victims, like Ted Bundy's victims. Like how Wait, sick. are you serious? Yes. Wow. Like how sick no, is ma'am. that? No, ma'am. Yeah. Like, I mean, what, what will put your mind to think that that's like, I don't, I, I just, that doesn't connect to me at all. And I mean, I guess I understand. Exactly. I don't understand, but you know, you're attracted to him, but then you dress up like the, people he killed tortured yeah, like killed. a victim that's yeah oh my goodness so yeah so let's go back to richard ramirez's fan club so we'll talk about this one lady doreen lloyd she began writing ramirez after seeing him on television following his arrest and she was his biggest fan and wrote him almost on a daily basis soon after she became his girlfriend and doreen was one of up to about 15 girlfriends that richard ramirez had following his arrest He was very popular. So the two started seeing each other regularly with Doreen visiting around four times a week. And as the years passed, an unlikely romance blossomed between the pair and Ramirez proposed to her in 1988. The pair officially tied the knot at California's San Quentin State Prison. The couple were married for 13 years. So Doreen, and I'm going to put quotes, left him in 2009 after DNA confirmed that Ramirez had raped and murdered a nine-year-old little girl named May Lung in 1984. So this was a crime that wasn't attributed to him in the beginning. So it wasn't discussed during the trial. It was only like, I guess, older people. And this was something that happened before they even knew that his, I guess, his crime spree started. But DNA, you know, it was 2009. So DNA was available there. So they showed that he had actually sexually assaulted her before he killed her and all that. And so that was the thing that said, told Doreen, oh, I want to divorce him or I want to get away from him. So you mean to tell me all the prior? Yeah. So all the other stuff that he did, all the other killings and rapings and everything, everything that he did, that was, that was fine. But when he raped a nine-year-old, like, no, then that's, that's where you draw the line. Like, I mean, I understand that's sick too, but all the other stuff is sick as well. So all those women lost their lives and right, were right, it, of his and and like, yeah, made it different with a kid, though. right? Like because like, oh, if you're sick enough to want to marry him, to marry him to right. begin with, with all the other stuff, you should. I mean, that should go along with, and you're still sick. I mean, I don't know. Right. I guess she grew a conscious or something. I don't know. But yeah, she's still left weird, him. though. Right, yeah, right. It's just so weird. Odd. So Ramirez was still getting letters from women after his marriage with Doreen ended. So, but shortly after his split with her, he became engaged to a writer named Christine Lee. Like he was just keeping them going. It was just, you know, so he was engaged to her. And then she claimed that they never kissed and their visits took place behind a glass screen. So I'm not sure what she's getting out of that. But that's what I 
was wondering. <laughs> I, like... I don't I don't get it. You never touched him. You've never kissed. You've only seen him behind a glass screen. And are there any pictures with how these women look by chance? I'm, and I'm and I'm not saying that looks is yeah. what it's all about. Mm-hmm. But, uh, and you guys can go to our Instagram it. page. Right. Wow. You guys can go to our Instagram page and you can see it. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, they look I, I mean like regular women to me. Like, yeah. So it's not like there was I don't even want to talk bad about a woman and how she looks, but you know, it's just Mm. weird <laughs> i mean it's just weird to me so but you know again the pair they never tied the knot because you know he was still married to the other lady so where is richard ramirez today well this is something i don't know how it slipped my mind or i just don't remember it or you know because you guys know my rememory isn't always good but your rememory, <laughs> my rememory <laughs> my rememory <laughs> isn't always that good but yeah, but he wasn't he wasn't executed. He didn't go to the gas chamber. So while he'd been sentenced to you know die in the gas chamber, he never made it there. So instead, he went on to live the rest of his 23 years on death row at San Quentin State Prison. And Ramirez died from complications of B cell lymphoma in 2013. Hmm. So he got to die from his causes or you know the sickness on his own. He didn't go to death you know, the, the gas chamber or anything, right. he got to, you know, die, I guess, how he was supposed to be, you know, how, what, however that is, but in 2013. So it amazes me how long they hold these prisoners on this. Mm-hmm. Road. Right. Like years. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was convicted in, was it 88? Right. And this was 2013. And wow. he still wasn't, you know, hadn't put that he was you know so i don't even and the thing is i don't even remember hearing about that on that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like yeah when you you put people on death row is it like only a certain amount of deaths that the state or county or whatever will pay for per year you'll you'll be amazed at how many are still waiting like but yeah, that's what I'm saying. I know it's because I guess they have like, appeals and appeals, and once that that's all exhausted but i'm not sure the time in between yeah right like and how many chances yeah, you, you get? Remember, they got to wait in line. Number one ain't went mm-hmm. yet. He's still holding. But that's out. what I'm saying. Like yeah. they obviously don't do executions every day. But like, why don't right. they? I guess mm-hmm. that's the question I'm kind of curious about. I don't yeah. need to know, but I'm just curious as to like why is there such a hold up for the people that yeah, don't have all that like, other think stuff about, pending? I, I feel you though, because when you mm-hmm. hear that, you know, the judgment come down like the death penalty. You know, mm-hmm. like, right? Yeah, and then this gets mm-hmm. about fifty more and years. Outlive right. most of the family members yeah, that were exactly. married victims. Right? Yeah. Crazy. And that costs money. You know. Right. Every day that they're there, it costs you know people money. But yeah, so he also so along with his B cell lymphoma, he also was affected by chronic hepatitis C, and he had a substance abuse. Now. <sighs> I don't know how that happened, how he has a substance abuse in jail on death row. Oh, because wow. isn't death row even more segregated than like he's not in general population. How did he get some substance to abuse? <laughs> you know, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But I guess maybe they smuggle, you know, sometimes it'd be the guard smuggling in. My goodness. The different con- what is it called? What? Contraband? contraband exactly mm-hmm. so maybe that was how he was getting his stuff. oh that's just crazy yeah enough to have well, enough, on death row i think you are highly you know under high security that's what i was thinking like how's that but i guess yeah just like martia said yeah the the um what you call them the guards the prison guards yeah um, i mean maybe because he did have such a fan club i'm sure women paid so that's usually how that happens. Oh, they pay yeah, the guard or whatever. Possibility. They send money to them and then they do whatever they do. Right. Who? Yeah. So Ramirez was 53 year old, 53 years old when he died. And it's funny because I, I just don't even remember him passing away in 2013 because I would remember because that's, you know, like a story that I kind of remember. But yeah. So but did you know that there was a condition that describes this lunacy that women, you know, their people's attraction it's called. No, but I can't wait to hear this one. It's called hybristophilia. Mm, hybristophilia. Heard of that. Wow. So it's a condition in which a person is sexually attracted to a partner who is known for committing a horrific act, such as murder. 
So it's informally known as Bonnie and Clyde syndrome. We've heard that, you know, that name, the Bonnie and Clyde syndrome, but referencing, you know, the infamous depression era crime couples, uh, specifically Bonnie Parker's undying devotion for the homicidal Clyde Barrow and Sippers. You guys can go on and flip on to episode number 31 of Sipping on Wine and we discuss Bonnie and Clyde. So there you go. If you want to get a little more of a background on that. Yeah, you gave some good details on that mm-hmm. one. Yep. So we have a Bonnie Thanks and Clyde I hadn't episode. Heard. Yep. Right. Episode 31, Sippers. If you haven't listened to that one, go listen to that. But that's the end of that story of the Night Stalker. But I just really wanted to just dig into, you know, more of his after arrest life. Like, because he was popping. Like, you know, had people visiting him and letters i'm sure he got letters that's terrible in, as you know in, in boxes full of letters you know of all the people that used to write him which is sickening and I, and I still just don't understand that when you see like somebody on tv you don't know him from anything and you see him and then you see that he killed people and did all this and you're like oh yeah i want that like how do your panties get wet from something yeah. like that that's yeah. just oh, wow just like the- he he uh yeah, it's weird, but there's that. So yeah, so sippers, if you want to look up that up a little bit, hybristophilia, and it's spelled H Y B R I S T O P H I L I A. So I wonder, since it's a condition, can the women be treated for a psychotic behavior? Because that's kind of psychotic. You oh, I'm going to turn to uh, Martia. Martia, what, what's your? I mean, that sounds like the condition. That sounds like it needs treatment. Right, but so I'm not familiar with that um, condition. Mm-hmm. That's A, so I wouldn't be able to really speak on that. But the only way that we would actually, as a, on the on the level that I'm at, only way we would actually treat something like that is if they come in for help, right? Oh, so, so you got to no identify. One brings them in. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So if no one brings them in, it's it's like, how do we know that they even have that? That's, right. Okay, and so, I'm sure that they won't think of the issue. So I guess exactly. you will never. Like one of their family members would have to be like, oh, no, uh, this is what my sister's got going on. Mm-hmm. I'm bringing her in. And then we go from there. Yeah. But yeah. And I wouldn't even think to bring anybody in. Like if I like if, say, my sister or somebody, a family member, family member wanted to be with a serial killer or something, then they wrote them like I wouldn't be like, I need to bring her in for treatment. Exactly. I would just leave it as that bitch is crazy. Like, What's <laughs> wrong with you? You know what I'm because saying? Because until like, now, I didn't even know there was a diagnosis mm-hmm. for this, mm-hmm. right? Our DSM manual is super duper thick, and I had no idea that this that was that's in there. In there. <laughs> I wonder if it's in there, though, if it's like an official I'm going to check for it. Now that you brought it up, I'm going to mm-hmm. check for it, because that's, that's like, wow. Yeah. Weirdy. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, so that's the end of the Night Stalker and his band of women and all that went on with that. Next up, we're going to flash back to a previous episode that we did, Sippers, episode number 43. We have an update. It's episode 43 of the Nancy Crompton Brophy case. If you guys remember, if not, you know, you guys can go on and hit pause and just go back to that episode 43 Mm -hmm. and listen to that because we have an update because she was going to trial and everything. And so now that's been adjudicated i guess is the word wondering about this case okay Mm -hmm. yes quickly i'll just give you guys a background sippers she was a novelist who wrote steamy romance novels about muscular men who were often shirtless and their cover titles were things like the wrong husband and some carried taglines that said wrong never felt so right i like saying it like that Ooh, wrong (laughs) never felt so right okay Mm. that sound like a palace i know right didn't it an erotica book or whatever Her books were tales of attempted murder, infidelity, crime, lust, you know, the general kind of lusty books that, you know, that are out there. And then the woman even wrote a blog post and it was titled, quote, how to murder your husband. So she was on trial for, wait for it, murdering her husband, Sippers. You guys remember this one? So we have the conclusion to that. So the evidence proved that she was wrong about her not guilty. And in fact, they convicted her of murder. So Nancy was sentenced on June 13th, 2022 to life in prison with the, with the possibility of parole for the 2018 murder of her husband. So Nancy is 71 and 
She was formally convicted of second degree murder on May 25th and following that was following a seven week trial. So think about this. She's 71 and she does have a chance to get out of prison after she serves 25 years. Hmm. So that'll put her at the ripe age of 96 when she gets out or when she's um, a possibility of her to get out. Well, she'll be 96 years old. So good luck. And that was of this year's Sippers 2022 that she was. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So if she makes it a 96 and she, um, you know, I guess good behavior and all the other jazz that you need to do. I don't know. I haven't been in jail before. Um, I, she might be able to get out if she's still here. And if not, you know, wow. I, I, she killed her husband where she could have just walked away. She just could have walked, walked away. Yeah. yeah. I'll never understand that. Mm-hmm. Like, instead of just saying, okay, I'm done with you. Let me get out of this marriage. Right. Well, wasn't understand. it over money? Well, yeah, she was, they were, so she needed the money. money. Yeah. That too, I guess. But, it still is no, she never that, enough. She needed that insurance policy. It's still she never enough. They always need the money, but they can't ever really enjoy the money because they end up getting caught at mm-hmm. some point. So that's right. just so terrible. Right. Yeah. Especially because she wrote about it too. She wrote a blog post. Right. How to murder your husband. Like, I mean, that's not smart. That's when I you guess. know folks are cocky about what they mm-hmm. did. Like they know they're going to get away with it. Yep. Yep. And so I was saying that she was going to be caught. I mean, she was going to be found guilty. Right. That's what I thought. And I'm, Glad that she was because uh, the evidence really did point towards her. Now, I will say this because y'all know I like to look at my court TV mm-hmm. and everything. Her face when they told her guilty, she looked like, well, she's surprised. Like, didn't really? convict me. I know I didn't get, I didn't do it. That's how she, the, <laughs> you going down. The nerve. The right. nerve. Ooh, the whole facial expression. Mm-hmm. It was like, who I love what Demetra says. She's going down. She's going down. <laughs> <laughs> Off she goes. And, you know, I don't have any other parting words for her. That's just it. I don't either. Maybe she'll write a book in there mm-hmm. while I got locked I up. I mean, she has time. She has and, time. You know, she can kind of write about her time being locked up after oh, yeah. killing her husband. You know, right. just finish off the blog, do a part two. Yeah, she can say I'm wrongfully convicted. Oh my goodness! Right, right, (laughs) right, man. All right, so I'm gonna switch over. We're gonna switch gears, and I don't want to say it's on a lighter note, but kind of on a different note. We're gonna have a take another sip segment, sippers. This is where we discuss something that really caught us off guard. It surprised us. Maybe it made us mad, or maybe it made us laugh. But either way, it made us want to do what, ladies. Take, Take another, another We're going to get that together for you one day, Sippers. I mean, I'm yeah, telling you. It'll be in sync one day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so this didn't make me laugh, but it was one that made me want to take another sip. Like, damn. All right, so this is a story that I came across, and it's kind of weird. So you know, ladies, how they say that elephants have a good memory. Like, I've heard that many times. I think I've heard it forever. So I've never really believed that. Wait, I'm going to pause you before you continue. Mm-hmm. Elephants? And lions are my favorite animals. Really? Perfect. I know Perfect. so much history on all. Um, you might want to stay away from them, but um, okay. No, no. Okay. Well, let's keep listening. I'm gonna keep listening, girl. Okay. 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 So yeah. So yeah. But I've never really believed. You know that I just thought it was like a saying or whatever. But I've never seen it being you know displayed or you know like an elephant whatever has a good memory. But. An elephant in eastern India killed a 70-year-old woman and then returned to her funeral to trample her corpse. So what in the world? Yeah. So let me tell you how it happened. So her name was Maya Murmu, and she was at a well drawing water in Mayor Banj. I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Mayor Banj District's Raipal Village. When the wild elephant appeared out of nowhere, authorities said that it had strayed from the Dalma Wildlife Sanctuary, nearly 125 miles away from Mayor Banj. After being trampled, Miss Muru was taken to a hospital where she died from her injuries, unfortunately. So reports said that her family members gathered for the funeral and they were in the middle of performing um, the last rites. And that same damn elephant 
appeared again, and it lifted her body from the funeral pyre. So that's like a bonfire. It's a heap of combustible materials used in burning for burning a corpse, you know, at a funeral ceremony. But he lifted her body and then he trampled her again. And the shocked mourners, they couldn't do anything but step back and, you know, just look on because it was a elephant. And, you know, you can't really oh, fight an elephant. My goodness. So the I'm family going to defend mm, the elephant. She must have been very crude and rude to that elephant. Are you serious? But because the family, that's the mm, only reason why they do that, though. But she, they just said she was at a well just getting water. And then no, the elephant she trampled her. No, she did something else. And then he came back later and did it some more. I'm calling Peter. I don't know how he knew when the f- funeral was, but he was probably just lurking trying to get to her because it's weird like he really he came back do and, elephants uh, operate off of like smell memory like how dogs or cats or whatever do like because yep. i'm with you know. like how do, oh you said they do mm-hmm. oh wow like i don't know he had something unless she had something like on her body that smelled a certain way that triggered I something i don't know the comments i saw under um, the story when I saw it, they were like saying the same thing as Demetrius. They were like, "Man, elephants don't forget when you treat them wrong." Yeah, like I wonder he had to have done something to provoke that in order for but it to come. What back. in the world could she have done like that? It's just know. like she was seventy, right? Like, That's what I'm saying. Like this is like mind blowing mm-hmm. to me. Like. She I mean, but what if that elephant been in back. the village for years? They don't forget. Well, no, it though. wasn't. They said it, it was at a sanctuary 125 miles away. It escaped. So. Oh, well, that one took took his anger out on, on her. Yeah, like. I, That's I, odd. I that is yeah. very odd. But yeah, so after the, the elephant trampled her again, and after the elephant left, then the family was able to go back and continue on with the ceremony for her and laid her to rest so may she rest in peace but that's kind of terrible yeah that's that's horrible Mm -hmm. but yeah so before i close sippers i have one last thing um ladies we discussed this on our live earlier this week and sippers if you haven't looked at our live it's on our instagram page just go there we discussed a vegas trip are we going to go to vegas uh oh. Yes, we are. <laughs> yes. We got to get a date set. Got to set a date. I think we're going to have a Vegas little getaway. Yes. And so we're going to see who want to come with us. So, yeah. So we're looking to go to Vegas sometime this year, mm-hmm. maybe next year. I don't know how things shake out. It happens out. in Vegas. Stays so in Vegas. Stays in Vegas. Yes. But yeah, no, but for real, twice. I do want to go. That would be fun. We have a few people that we know that want to go with us already. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not looking to have like, you know, like a, a huge, but I mean, you know, we're all going to go get our hotel room, get our flights and be like, we'll meet you there. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and we might do some things together, but it's not like you have to stick with us the whole mm-hmm. time. It's okay, but it's going to be a fun trip regardless. Mm-hmm. Right. And we'll post it on Instagram if you guys can't come. But I just really want to go. So, um, yeah, hit us up if you're interested. <laughs> and we'll let you know the dates and stuff. And we're going to have a, a little fun little time out there. It'll be probably, like, what, October, November? Somewhere and if we can't get it in by then, yes. it'll be 2023. Mm-hmm. But we're going to go to though. Vegas eventually. All right, well, sippers and ladies, we've come to the end of the episode. Oh no, this went by so fast. We are there. Man. The great episodes, which I feel like all of them can be considered great, they always go by so fast. Like we mm-hmm. just get lost in the conversation, lost in the right. case and story. But yeah, I hate to yep. end it, ladies. Right. We so this is our right. right well, we we gotta go. <laughs> we gotta but go. This is our second to last episode. Before our small break, um, we just will take a break in the month of July. So there'll be no new episodes in the month of July. But we'll be back August 1st, August 2nd, whenever the first Tuesday in August. Mm-hmm. 
that's when we'll be back. We're going to be enjoying our summer. Mm -hmm. We'll probably pop on live here and there, but of course, we're going to be on live. Yeah, on Instagram, it's going to pop in. We're still on live every once in a while. But, you know, we just need to look a little break. We would love to see who all is listening in. Mm -hmm. And you can Mm -hmm. join in. Yep. Conversations are always random, but they're good. Yep, it sure is. (laughs) All right, well, sippers, ladies, until next time. Bye. Bye, ladies. Bye, sippers. Bye. Bye, ladies. Bye, sippers. Bye.